So it's been hard to identify uh, the causes of autism for many reasons. One is just because it's so hard to define the condition and to get to people to agree on what the condition is. Second, it's uh, hard to diagnose kids carefully. Uh, third, and I think most importantly, is that autism has many causes. And we know it has many causes. Uh, we know it can be caused by brain damage when a child is born. Uh, we know that it has some known genetic causes, but that the known genetic causes only account for a few percent of all of the cases of children with autism. When a disease has many causes, it confuses things. It makes it hard to sort out the information and hard to identify any one of those causes. And that's, I think, the, the biggest reason why it's been hard to identify the specific causes of, auti of autism is because there are so many of them. And because different kids with autism are probably really different from one another, but in ways that we haven't yet fully understood. We wanted to understand the genetic causes of autism. And genetics is all about families. And you can learn more about the genetics of a family by studying a big family than by studying a small family. And as someone who comes from a big family myself, I was all too well aware of how powerful big families can be for studying uh, genetics. And so um, we wanted to find big families with autism because here in America, families are typically very small. And uh, it's been hard to find genes associated with autism. And we felt one of the reasons was because people had been, small, uh, had been studying only smaller families. So we thought that if we traveled the world around and found the big families with autism, that that would be a useful uh, alternative to help us find inherited and genetic causes of autism. Big families are particularly helpful for identifying uh, genes because basically when we're studying genetics, we are studying um, association or linkage as we call it in the trade. Uh, and we're looking for linkage between a disease and something else. And so the more times we look, the better uh, and more clearly we can see the relationships. It's just like uh, flipping a coin. If you flip a coin, it can come up heads or tails half the time, but you may flip a coin seven times and be misled if it comes up tails six times in a row, but if you flip it a hundred times, you know you'll get 50-50 uh, or very close to the right answer. So we thought that uh, bigger families will allow us to flip the coin that many more times and, uh, and get more clear information about genetic patterns of autism. So the uh, new genes that we've identified as part of this study um, give us some new insights into what the causes of autism can be. We knew that most of uh, the genes associated with autism had to do with the synapses or the circuits that connect cells in the brain. And um, the new genes that we found confirm that theory that a lot of autism seems to have to do with connections and with the changes in connections that enable learning. On the other hand, the genes give us new insight into what some of these mechanisms can be that are abnormal in autism. One of the insights it gives us is that um, it is very uh, heterogeneous in its causes. What that means is that um, we shouldn't think of all kids with autism as being uniform and similar to one another but that we have to take every kid with autism and look at them uh, as unique. Uh, that they will tend to have special things that work for them uh, and special defects that are not necessarily shared by other kids with autism. There are probably a hundred or more different ways that a child can get autism. And so that the word itself uh, is not a unitary thing, but in fact, it's many, many different conditions. And the more we understand about those many, many different conditions, the more we can um, tailor our treatment to each child. As we recognize that autism is many, many different conditions, it allows us to then direct our search for the causes of autism informed by that knowledge. 
In other words, we have to understand that we're looking not at one syndrome, but at many, many different little syndromes in order to then develop scientific approaches that allow us to dissect that complexity uh, rather than expecting there to be one big gene or one big cause. And so as we understand that we're, we have to deal with that complexity, then we can say, okay, let's take that information back to the lab. Now let's develop the tools that allow us to take that complexity, piece it out, sort it out, uh, and attack the pieces one at a time rather than trying to solve the whole puzzle all at once. Recently, many of us in the field uh, have started to refer not to autism but as the autisms and to start to think about it as a plural uh, because um, it really seems most appropriate and most useful uh, treatment-wise to think of it that way. As we get into thinking about uh, drug therapies for autism, better drug therapies that attack the specific genes that are implicated, uh, we need then to sort the kids so that we know which kids to expect to respond to one drug, which kids to respond to another. For example, here at Children's Hospital, we've started a clinic uh, dedicated to doing clinical trials of one genetic cause of autism already. It's called Fragile X Syndrome. And we're now starting a national clinical trial of specific drug therapies for Fragile X Syndrome that we think are going to improve the underlying genetic and biochemical abnormality that those kids have. In order for us to have these trials, we have to first sort the kids to know which ones should be in one trial and which ones should be in another trial. And that's really uh, the first step that the genetics allows us to take.